I used to think that using a gimbal while travel vlogging would be awesome, but ultimately way too much extra equipment to handle in the field and lug around between shooting. So I rarely ever used one, and my footage was definitely shaky at times. Now if you don't quite get what a gimbal is, it's basically just this device, which balances your camera and allows you to get ultimate stabilization to create super professional, cinematic, buttery smooth shots. Is that a drone? No, it's just a handheld gimbal. In this video, I am testing the new Hoham iSteady Multi Gimbal, which is a more affordable gimbal that works with point and shoot cameras, action cameras, and smartphones. And today I will test it with the Canon G7X Mark II, the GoPro Hero 7 Black, and the iPhone 10 because I don't have the 11. I'll show you what the footage looks like from these cameras with and without the gimbal so we can both look at it together and decide if it really looks that much better and if the gimbal is worth it to take along travel vlogging. Hi friends, welcome back to MATV. I'm Alicia and I help travel vloggers level up their video production skills. So first of all, a big thank you to Hohem Tech for sending this new gimbal. It is the iSteady Multi. And I love that this is a budget-friendly gimbal, currently for sale for about $169. And while it's far less expensive than the big gimbal brands like DJI or Zhiyun, it is still a high quality gimbal. You see, gimbals are still fairly new technology and although low price sometimes indicates poor quality, in this case, it simply indicates that the cost of gimbals is coming down because it's a fairly new thing, or it was, and now it's not so new anymore. So highly affordable, but still good quality. I love that. And like I said, this gimbal is designed to support point and shoot cameras like the G7X or the Sony RX100. So you can get really high quality footage with the gimbal and you can also use it with the GoPro or the Osmo action cameras or any smartphone. It comes with this handy detachable tripod base which you can take off and then you can actually attach any other um, monopod or tripod. So once you get it up there on like a monopod or extension pole, that is when you really get that handheld drone effect that I like so much for some reason. I think it's because it's so hard to fly drones these days. It's so restricted, especially areas around here. So lately I've really been leaning back on the days before I had a drone where I would just use the DJI Osmo on an extension pole and, and kind of pretend it was a drone. It works. It's also got this handy little screw on the side that you can attach accessories to. And I will link to a smartphone mount that I found online if you'd like to use your phone as a viewfinder. And so far I've been able to figure out how to do this with the GoPro. GoPro has always had a good app that will connect and let you use your phone as a viewfinder, but I thought I'd be able to use the Canon Connect app to see through my G7X, but I was very disappointed to find out that you can't. I've done this in the past with my M50 and larger Canon cameras, but for some reason, the Canon Connect, Canon Connect app will not support the G7X in the video. You can use it for photography through the G7X, but not in video. Very disappointing. However, I am determined, so I'm working on either mounting up a monitor solution or using my phone as a viewfinder, perhaps with a micro HDMI to full HDMI cable, and then an adapter from full HDMI to the lightning port to my phone. I have no idea if this is gonna work, but I will check back in with you guys at some point and let you know. And if you're wondering why I wouldn't just use the back of my camera as the viewfinder as I'm operating the gimbal, it's because when you're doing the gimbal stuff, you're gonna be a lot down low and maybe up high. And if you do use the flip out screen, it's gonna throw off the balance of the gimbal so you want to keep that down and I think overall it'll just be easier to have like a, a viewfinder that will tilt that you can always just look at and know exactly what's going on in your camera and by the way this is not looking balanced right now because number one the gimbal's not on and the camera is not on so it's got to be balanced with the lens open because the lens adds extra weight in the front but that's how it looks once it's balanced so just to show you a little bit more of what's going on in the handle, you've got your joystick right here. So that is going to operate the camera up and down, left and right. So you can do those smooth pans and tilts. And if you double tap in the front, that's going to recenter the camera. You can do mode selection right here. And then Hohem also has an app, which is nice because you can switch between the four modes of operation that the gimbal offers. And you can also operate the joystick as well. And you can even fine tune the speed of the joystick, which is nice. Now the four gimbal modes that you see here are pretty interesting and it took me a little bit of time to wrap my head around them and really understand what they're best used for. In fact, I'm probably still understanding what they're best used for, but next week I'm gonna make a part 
part two to this video where I go through each mode and really explain them and give you examples of how to best use them, what sort of shot looks best with them, and what not to do. Because if you use the wrong mode and try to get a certain shot, you're really not going to get the best results. And the good thing is most gimbal brands have these basic four modes. They might have slightly different names, but it's basically the same across the board and they're really important to understand in order to get the best shots possible. So subscribe now to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss next week's video about those modes. Now another nice feature is the fact that the gimbal handle here is something that you charge up so you power the gimbal but because the battery is so big inside of this handle um, it can power the gimbal for up to eight hours which is like forever as far as filming time for one day so there's so much extra juice in this handle you can plug in your camera via USB and charge up your camera which is amazing because cameras like the G7X and the GoPro have the worst battery life on the planet and they need to be recharged constantly. So the fact that it's just all one piece, it charges and it, it, it it's just so cool. And it even has these green LED lights on the side which let you know exactly how much juice you have to play around with. So basic operation of the gimbal looks a bit like this. It really looks best when you're performing slow and steady motion on either a still or a moving subject. Following your subject is a popular gimbal move, and when you pair that with slow motion, you can really capture the essence of their movement through space. Not like outer space, just space. Of course, it helps if you can effectively direct that subject to move in a certain way, but since I can't in this case, I simply get what I get. Another cool thing to do is to sort of move around your subject in a steady way. There's some speed ramps in there to get those nice cinematic shots that are so popular now that gimbals are more of a thing. Like I said earlier, I personally love emulating the look of a drone and it's so nice to see this effect on an actual Canon camera versus just the DJI camera that you'd have in a DJI drone. And you can fly through things without worrying about hitting the wings of the drone on the things because there are no wings because it's not a drone, it's a gimbal. And this is pretty amazing for vlogging too. I can show you things and move around and get all excited if I want to and not really worry about camera shake. It's not very hard to hold, it's not very heavy, uh, it's nice! And now for the real tests. We're gonna look at some footage from the Canon G7X Mark II with and without the gimbal. And the G7X really does have decent image stabilization built into it, so we're gonna see just how much better it can get. So here I am simply walking as smoothly as possible with the G7X. And if I were to really try to get it smooth, I would shoot at 60 frames a second and slow it down. So it's a little bit smoother, but let's see how much better we can get. And now we're gonna do that again with the gimbal. And of course you can see a major difference. If we wanna really go big or go home, we're gonna do it at 60 and slow it down with the gimbal. How does that look guys? How does that look? And now let's talk GoPro. So the GoPro Hero 7 Black is known as the most stable GoPro ever made. But of course there's room for better stabilization and the fact that the hyper smooth stabilization on the GoPro is only available at certain settings. Using the GoPro with a gimbal is gonna open up a much wider range of availability for stabilization, even not in those settings where HyperSmooth is available. So here we are walking with the GoPro, and since I am shooting at 1080 and 30 frames a second, I can use the HyperSmooth stabilization. If I were to shoot at 120 frames a second, I can slow it down a lot more. However, it will only allow me to use standard stabilization. But then if I introduce the gimbal, it doesn't even matter that it's at standard stabilization because, well, this is how smooth it is. And just for fun, let's throw it back to 30 frames a second, but use hyper smooth stabilization and see how that looks. And finally, we'll look at some footage shot back to back with the iPhone 10. Now, I personally don't really shoot anything on my iPhone unless it's like an Instagram story, but some people do, and it's totally fine to do that if that's what you're working with, because when you pair that with the gimbal, oh my gosh, it's gonna look so much better. So here I am just walking along, trying to be smooth with the iPhone 10. And then here I am walking along with the iPhone 10 on the gimbal and you can see exactly how much more smooth it is. So now that we love the gimbal and we love the footage that we're getting from the gimbal, we're gonna talk about the price we have to pay to get that elevated footage. And I don't mean the actual price because we already talked about that. We're gonna talk about the amount of space that it takes up in your camera bag when you're traveling and also the amount of setup and just general fumbling with it that you have to do in order to get that better footage. So this is the case. It is very smooth, very nice, and very thin. And I don't know if you're really supposed to do this, but I found that you can literally just fold down the gimbal with 
the G7X attached or the GoPro attached and fit it all in there. This is huge because it would be a complete pain to reattach and rebalance that front piece every time you wanted to use the camera. It actually wouldn't be a huge pain, it would just be one of those things that you might skip doing in the field. So when you're travel vlogging and there's a situation that you just want to grab your camera and film, if the camera were not already attached to the gimbal, you might just be like, oh, I don't need to do all that, I'm just going to grab and start filming. And any time that you skip using a piece of gear when you're travel vlogging, it makes that piece of gear not worth bringing. So the fact that it's already attached and you're pretty much forced to use the gimbal, you're going to use the gimbal, I think that makes it worth it 100%. And by the way, I will mention the unsexy part of using a gimbal. Well, it, it was kind of fun, but I did have to learn how to balance a gimbal. So there's this whole process that you have to do when you first kind of set it up. Uh, you actually have to redo it every time you switch out a different camera on it where you have to balance each piece of the gimbal. And what I meant by reattaching that front piece is that you can have these two ac axes of the gimbal balanced but not have the front piece balanced. So if once that front piece comes off and goes back on, it has to just be slightly rebalanced. And it's not so much of a pain, but you do need a flat surface. So, I mean, I know that of course, if you're you know doing some video production thing and you're really focused on your video production thing, that's one thing. But I always refer to travel vlogging as being a situation where you're kind of like on the run. You're not in your comfortable environment. You're you know, out and about and you may be with people and you may be walking down a city street. Like how are you gonna balance your gimbal at that point? So it's something that needs to be done, but this way with this case and with the camera staying attached, you don't need to do it. You do it at home and then you have it all attached and it's ready to go. So I love that this entire sleek case can just fit into your bag, everything is attached and it's ready to rock. And I will definitely bring this along travel vlogging. I'm definitely in love with it. I love that it not only stabilizes footage like to a crazy degree, that it charges your camera as well because actually this is gonna make it so it's one less thing I need to bring along because 100% of the time I will have a uh, power bank that I will bring to recharge my GoPro, to recharge my G7X and recharge my phone in an emergency. So the fact that this can do that, I think really makes it worth it. It's better than any other hand grip, basically. And if you compare it to another hand grip, there's like 15 more things that this does that other hand grips don't do. You can't wrap this around a tree, like the Gorilla Pod, but that's the only thing. I'm actually so in love with it that I think I need one for my M50 now, but that would be a much larger gimbal, so maybe we'll get there. And I'm gonna go ahead and clear it up because I know some of you are going to ask, like, well, she's back to using the G7X Mark II. Yes, I am, because if you missed all the drama with the G7X Mark III, you can go back and watch those videos. Uh, I returned that camera. That camera was a freaking mess, and I'm over it. I'm not gonna talk about it anymore. I still think the G7X Mark II is the best point-and-shoot vlogging camera available right now. Sony is definitely a contender, but Sony does not have the 1.8 aperture that the Canon cameras have, that the G7X has, and it also just doesn't have the look of a Canon. So, I hope that the G7X Mark III it's better. There's supposed to be a firmware update uh, next month. I don't, I honestly, I don't think that's going to solve the issue of the terrible autofocus, but we will see. I remain hopeful and I will repurchase the camera if it does solve the issue because boy, that would be bomb if it had the audio input and I was able to use it on the gimbal. But anyway, for now, I'm done. Done with the Mark III. Back to the Mark II. I'd love to hear whether or not you guys are into gimbals or if you prefer to stabilize your footage by hand. If you do want to learn some techniques on how to minimize camera shake without the use of a gimbal, check out the video I made about that. There's about 10 different tips and techniques that you can use for more stable footage. And there's some really interesting yoga tips in there that you may have not heard before. Otherwise, let me know in the comments what techniques you would like to learn next. I'm helping you level up your travel vlogging skills one technique at a time. You can also jump into my Facebook group, Travel Film Friends, which is a place where us travel vloggers discuss our craft daily. You can ask questions, I will answer them. We can talk about gear. I'll probably keep talking about this Stay tuned to my Instagram stories as well because I will keep talking about this <laughs> as I progress with it. And make sure you don't miss part two of this video where I go over the video modes. All right, guys, I'm Alicia, and I'll see you next time. Bye.